cocoon her offspring. The foam hardens into a protective case that cossets her young. Foam nesting frogs also get into a lather tending their young. The mother secretes a fluid that the pair whip up into a foam, similar to egg white. She lays her fertilized eggs inside. The outer wall of bubbles hardens like meringue and protects the eggs from predators, bacteria and the weather. Three days later, the first of several hundred tadpoles emerge. While some bubble wrap their young, others literally splash out on childcare. In the Amazon, Splash Tetras stage a leaping contest. These strange fish out of water lay their eggs on leaves. The males leap to inspect suitable sites. They prefer protected leaves with a surface that's easy to stick to. The leap requires perfect posture. The fish must align itself so it grips the leaf by surface tension as it lands. The male guards his chosen leaf until a female arrives. The pair line up under the leaf and perform the ultimate act of synchronized swimming. As a cue, the female nudges the male with her head. Then a flick of their tails propels them in perfect unison. They are so synchronized, to the human eye they appear as one. The eggs are laid, but the male's work has just begun. He must keep them wet until they hatch. The splash tetra must have the most labor-intensive childcare of any fish. But his eggs are safer from predators on leaves rather than in the river. After two days of hard splashing, the fry emerge. The Surinam toad's version of parenting is even more eccentric. Her young literally get under her skin. They develop from eggs to tadpoles in a wad of skin on her back and emerge as fully formed toadlets. Most toads lay hundreds of eggs and only a few survive. Using skin care ensures that all the Suriname's offspring become baby toads. Once free, they fend for themselves. For some, parental care is the father's responsibility. The African bullfrog is one such doting parent. His tadpoles develop in shallow pools where he acts as their lifeguard. But water is siphoned up by many thirsty creatures.
Faced with towering competition, the bullfrog retreats. But as the water levels drop, he still remembers his offspring. The sun also causes the precious water to vanish. Soon the mud will be concrete hard. His poor tadpoles are left high and dry. They call to their father for help. He reacts by digging an escape route. It's a race against time. He paddles away to soften the rock-hard earth as he digs a canal. Their pleas for help urge him on. Breakthrough happens in the nick of time. He leads his offspring to safety. The bullfrog is one of the world's most devoted fathers. But he has competition. The Siberian dwarf hamster must win the prize for being nature's new man. The male acts as midwife during his partner's labor. Male midwifery is unique among mammals. And even in humans, it's a recent development. Biologically, human birthing behavior is strange. Only humans have such painful and extended labor, and few animals have such helpless young. But like other mammals, human males traditionally stay away at the birth. However, the hamster's mate is her constant birth companion. Russian hospitals still follow tradition and exclude fathers from the birth process. But the hamster's partner shows a feminine care and concern. He cleans each newborn baby in turn. His human counterpart can only wait in the sidelines. At birth, the hamster even cuts the umbilical cord with his teeth. Traditionally, women continue to help once the birth is over. Again, the male hamster takes on this caring role. He retrieves any youngsters that wriggle from the nest. In many countries, human fathers are now encouraged to attend the birth. But in Russia, old traditions die hard. The hamster may be the only mammal that naturally acts like a new man. But there's a catch. He soon reveals a less sensitive side. His partner can only mate over the next three hours. Helping at the birth stops him missing the moment. But the dwarf hamster has a rival for his new age credentials.
Seahorses are the only animals in which the male actually becomes pregnant. He carries his partner's eggs in a brood pouch on his stomach. The pouch lining acts like a placenta and nourishes the developing young. When the time comes to give birth, he even suffers contractions. They become more violent as the birth approaches. He gives birth to around 100 young. Each is a miniature replica of their father. Seahorses are the only animals whose males experience the birth process. His young grip the nearest thing they can find, even each other. He may be the spitting image of his father, but from now on he's on his own. For seahorses, parental care stops at birth. Extended childcare is most common in mammals. The Asian musk shrew has perhaps the oddest way of keeping her young in line. Moving a large family between nests is a big responsibility. To avoid getting lost, each youngster bites the fur by its neighbor's tail and hangs on tight. To the young, it's a game of follow my leader. Wherever their mother goes, they keep in step. But if the mother becomes separated from her brood, the youngsters grab any moving thing that passes. Their persistence and strength of grasp is phenomenal. As long as the train keeps moving, they'll hold on tight. Even in the air. Stop the train and they let go. When the mother returns, order is restored to her chaotic brood. She guides her daisy chain to safety. Such care may seem odd, but in a world of bizarre breeding, we are stranger. No other animal tends its young for as long as us. Our next weird journey looks at the fantastic ways animals feed. <laughs>